Hi, my loves. Rose here with the Cackling Moon. This is going to be one of those rambly, chatty videos. And I have my beautiful Starla with me. Um, so, I wanted to talk about um, astrology a little bit, sort of, just very lightly. <laughs> um, so, to the chart, I was looking at the chart right now because I had an amazingly intense amazing but not not really amazing but I had an intense emotional um, outburst last night and it pretty much just had me oh excuse me it pretty much had me in bed by 8 30 um, for the next 12 hours so Saturn is currently um, Saturn is currently opposing my natal moon in Cancer. So Saturn is in Cap uh, Capricorn, and it's currently opposing my natal moon. So my moon, where, where my moon is when I was born, basically, to put it into words. <laughs> and um, Saturn is also conjunct, no, is it? It's also, well, I don't know if it's conjunct, but it's with Pluto, Pluto's, Pluto's there too. But um, anyway, I'm feeling like those energies opposing my moon, which is my emotions, are causing me to feel the way I've been feeling the last like week. Not to mention we are in, like the sun is in cancer and cancer season is highly emotional and cancer is the ruler of my moon. My moon, my moon is in cancer. I'm probably completely saying this all wrong. Like I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not an astrologer. <laughs> but anyways, um, it's, there's like a lot of big transits right now with my moon. And I think because my moon is all about your, the moon is all about your emotions and stuff. I think that's why I've been feeling emotionally cuckoo, um, for the last week. Literally, I've been crying pretty much every day. Um, I was having big outbursts of emotions, um, on Saturday and, um, it's just been a rough week, um, emotionally for me. So if I was like curious to see what the Astros said, so I looked it up and that's what it said. So just wanted to share that. Anyways, um, I did a little Instagram TV thing on my Instagram <laughs> talking about the importance of self-care and taking care of you and doing you and honoring your darkness, not just your light. And um, I just wanted to kind of go into that a little bit more deeper here on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm not saying that be living in light and being positive 100% of the time is a bad thing because it's definitely like, it definitely has its advantages to be a positive person. Um, but I also feel like it's almost unhealthy to be 100% positive and happy all of the time because it means you were 100% dismissing your negatives and you were dismissing your darkness and you were dismissing your emotions. Um, and emotions aren't always positive emotions can be dark and and emotions can be negative and i feel like we need to get out of the mindset that we are we are bad people if we are constantly sad or if it's a bad thing to be crying all the time or you know what i mean and it made me think because i was pulling cards from my magic my earth magic oracle which i love by the way it's like been a favorite lately and um, I was I was doing a, a chakra spread, which I posted on my Instagram. So if you want to see it, go check out my Instagram page. Um, but I was doing a chakra spread, and in the childhood position, I pulled um, I pulled the cards that really had me thinking because I pulled the devil with that, and it really had me thinking about my childhood where um, my my parents used to my dad mostly not my mom not so much my mom. But my dad used to be very strict with us growing up about our emotions. And um, I was, I, I am the only water sign in my family. Um, and so I was the crybaby. I was a sensitive one and they knew that about me. But my dad used to always tell me, um, you know, if I was crying and showing emotion, he automatically registered that as depression. And he did not like it. And he would always say, you know, I should be in prayer. I should be doing this and that. 
instead of being depressed and the reason why I'm depressed is because I'm not in prayer. It was just like an end, an, a never ending battle with him about that stuff. And so as a child, um, as a, as a teenager, I learned to go into hiding with my emotions. Um, I learned to not show my emotions in front of him, in front of my parents, both of them, to be honest, sorry, I have like a piece of fur in my face and it's like in my nostril because of Luna or Starla. Sorry guys, okay. So I learned to hide my emotions. I, at a young age, I learned to go to my room and cry by myself um, because I didn't want to cry in front of them. And how sad is that as a, as a child? I've got to be, I was probably in my preteens, like 10, 11, when I started to understand what my father was asking me not to do. And I didn't realize that at that age, I was setting myself up for like bottling up my emotions. And, you know, and I love my parents and I, and I love my dad. I love my dad, I'm a daddy's girl. Um, but the, some of his ways of thinking were so toxic. And I don't even think he really understood how toxic his, his parenting was at that time. And I forgive him since then. I mean, I'm not blaming him for this, but I'm just saying <laughs> that's where my bottling up my emotions came from. I learned to do it at a young age because I was told at, from parents, which, you know, when you're, when you're a child, your parents are everything to you. And so everything they say must be right, right? Um, that, uh, you know, we're not supposed to cry or crying equals depression. And that's not true. Just because I'm crying doesn't mean I'm depressed. It means I have to release something within me. And I've learned that since. I mean, obviously now I'm like in my 30s, so I know that. But it was a long battle with emotions. And, um, and to this day, like, I still am very, very uncomfortable crying in front of my father. Um, he has seen me cry since. He knows I'm very sensitive. I can't hide that. <laughs> but um, I do have my... I do have my my reservations with crying or showing emotion in front of my father. And so that's something I have to work with myself. But um, I, I this whole, like last night brought all of that up. <laughs> so when I pulled that childhood card and, and all of that and the devil, I was just like, dang, that really hit home, you know? And I pulled it for the root chakra position. So it just showed me that like, that's why I haven't been feeling stable that I haven't been feeling grounded lately because my emotions are everywhere and because I've been bottling up my emotions and I haven't been letting them out. And so when I find myself doing that, um, not only do I put myself in check, but I post publicly my emotions. And so it brings me back to like the days of MySpace when like I was a melodramatic teenager posting on MySpace about how I hate my life and all. You know what I mean? It brings me back to that. But when I was doing the post that I did last night, I was like, you know what? Some people are going to look at this and look at it as melodramatic teenager version of Rose. And I don't give a fuck. But there's going to be people who are going to read that post and they're going to be like, oh my God, she's verbalizing everything that I'm feeling that I don't know how to put into words. Or she's verbalizing what my depression looks and feels like. Um, but maybe I just don't know how to share it. And I did that. I did that last night for a reason. I did it because one, it was for me to release. Two, it was a, a, a cry for, for help. And three, because I wanted to be an example. Um, I am very, 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 very aware that I have a follower account. Um, I don't have a large follower account, but I do have a follower account where people will send me DMs and tell me how much they love my videos or how much they love my content or how much they look up to me. And I'm very, very aware of that. And I'm very aware that anything that I post or, how, or anything I say or the way, even just the way I live my life can be very influential or it could be very triggering to people. And so um, I try my best to put my content on my channel, on my Instagram page, on my wherever. <laughs> I do my best to be consistent 
but I also want to be transparent and I also want to be real and I there's nothing that I find more annoying than an influencer who is never transparent that they just post nothing but positivity all the time and they never show the real rawness you know it's like it's like they no longer they don't they don't they no longer have to prove to you that they're a real person you know so they can just post all of this bullshit positivity all the time and it's like oh they must be living the best life 24 7 which you know is a lie <laughs> because that is just not feasible um you can have beautiful days every day like i can have the pits in a single day that i also have the most beautiful day um and that's life I can have beautiful days where I'm so positive and happy and smiling and then one moment, one hour of that day, I am like in the pit. And that's just my reality. But um, I, <laughs> so I posted my thing about my depression last night and I shared a tidbit, literally, I just like, I was just typing what was in my head. And I shared that with all of you guys on my Instagram because I wanted you to see how raw <laughs> and how real um, I can be. And that I, am, I, I suffer from depression. I suffer from bad days. I suffer from emotions. I suffer from, you know, feeling inadequate. And, and yes, I do read, I read, I hold space for others. And yes, I do read tarot for other people, but no, I don't do it when I'm in that mindset. And I think that's also another important, important point that I wanted to make is that if you are a content creator, if you are a reader, if you are a healer, all of the above, everything, um, and everything in between, <laughs> if you are having a bad day and if you are just not emotionally in touch with yourself and you just need a break, it is okay to take that break. And it's also probably wise not to read for your clients or to book appointments with your clients when you're feeling in that space because then you're not giving them and their energy 100%. And you don't want your energy or your issues to, to kind of like tamper with their issues and their, and their energy and their reading, you know? So that's why it's really important for me to be able to to be able to identify when I need to step back and and to be able to say I can't do a reading today because and I have such amazing followers and I have such amazing clients that are all so understanding. <laughs> I very rarely I probably in the 7 years that I've been reading cards for people I have probably only encountered maybe two people that I can think of right now off the top of my head that had a problem with me delaying their reading. Um, and that says a lot. Seven years read, doing readings like every weekend pretty much, that says a lot. Um, it's so amazing to have such a huge support system in the spiritual community, community and to have clients that just get it, you know? And I feel like that has that, that has a lot to do with, I'm just real. Like I like to be real with my clients and I like to be real with the people who follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is very much tarot professional based. Like it's very much only about tarot, sometimes books, sometimes it's not. But I also like to have a twist in my Instagram page where I, I put personal content. So I'll update on like, oh, this is what I'm doing today, or this is what I'm wearing today, or this is what's going on in my life today, you know? <laughs> I like to kind of add a little twist of that. That's kind of like a, a nice little added seasoning on top of everything else. Um, because I want my, I want the people who follow me to, to not just see, to, I don't want them to see me as an influencer. I don't want them to see me as someone all high and mighty and above all. And you can't send me a DM because, oh my God, God forbid you send me a DM. I don't want you guys to think of, or look at me like that. I want to be a friend. I want to be just a person that you can reach out to. I don't want to be untouchable because I need touch. I need support. I need space held for me. I need a good conversation every once in a while. And if I place myself up here and I'm untouchable, then I'm not going to have that, you know? And um and so that's why I, it's that's like the beauty of having 
this the platform that I have and having the followers that I have because you guys are in my DMs and I may not always answer right away but I for the most part like to clean out my DMs to get through everybody's questions or everybody's like hello how are you today you know <laughs> some of you guys just simply tag me in whale posts and I love it because you guys love I love that you know when you see a whale you think of me <laughs> I hope for the reasons because I love whales as my spirit animals and I'm just kidding. But um um I just I just I just like that. It's it's nice and I need that. And so I feel like it would just be so lonely to be an influencer or a con content creator person and never have anyone talk to me or approach me on a personal level because they think they can't. I just think that that's so sad and I just I don't know. I'm just not there. And I don't think I'll ever be there. <laughs> I value like my conversations with you guys. So um, that's why I'm here pouring out my heart out in this YouTube video because it was something that was on my mind and the Instagram TV only allows me to film for 10 minutes and God knows a Gemini rising can't talk for just 10 minutes. So <laughs> let me make sure, let me turn, put my glasses on. What time is it? Okay, it's only 11. I have to leave. Ugh. I have to leave for work soon but I have about 10 minutes I could talk. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that was, that's what was going on. And so what happened was, is last night I, put, I did a post pretty much pouring my heart out as to why I was feeling depressed. And I was honoring my darkness. And I woke up this morning after I gave myself time out and like space and I felt so much better. I woke up to tons and tons of DMs from people sharing their, their own personal experiences or just sending their love and apologies to me. Um, and it was, it was nice. It was really nice to be able to, to go in and read those things because it shows me how, how many people go through that stuff, you know? And there's a lot of us that go through it. And, and I don't, every single time I feel depressed, I'm, I'm not like jumping and running to social media to post about it. I don't. There's so many times, you guys, that I am silently suffering, <laughs> that I am hurting so bad in my heart, or I'm just like so depressed, or my mood is just so blah, but I silently suffer. I put a fat, I put a mask on, um, and a lot of people don't know that I'm hurting and I don't, I don't let it out, you know? And that's because, like I said earlier, I learned at a very young age to bottle my emotions. And, um, but there are times like last night where it becomes so overwhelming and it just feels like, like this volcanic eruption within me and I just can't stop it. It's like the tower card moment. And, um, and I think even one of you guys who sent me a DM asked me if I was still going through my tower card moment. <laughs> I kind of laughed when I saw that. Um, but it, it just, it's just like, <sighs> Nasia and I lost my train of thought now. But anyways, um, tower card moment. Fuck, I can't even see. I can't remember now. <laughs> but anyways, um, when I go through that, I'm like, I have to, I, I wanted to post about it. Because it's like, you know what, I, I, I don't want my Instagram page to go too long looking like I'm fucking happy and like unicorns and rainbows every day. No, <laughs> no, that is just not me. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I am so in love with the moon card and the tarot. I think that's so many reasons why I base the cackling moon off of the moon card because I love to honor my darkness as much as I honor my light. I may not publicly honor my darkness as much, but when I do, you will see it, you will know it. So those of you guys who caught that post, it's still up, it's there in the raw to read. It's, you know, um, it has Cancer Moon written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> but um or sometimes I'll do it in an Instagram story like you guys will see if you if you are following my content enough you will see my darkness come out every once in a while um and I do that because I need to let it out and it, it takes me back to MySpace days where I was a melodramatic teenager on MySpace you know pouring out my heart and soul on my MySpace posts 
And I'm like thinking, I don't want, I don't want my Instagram to turn into MySpace. But you know, sometimes you just have to let shit out. And I've done it too on here on, on YouTube. You guys have seen me cry on my videos many times. You guys have seen me do rambly videos in the car crying. And it's therapeutic for me. It's a way for me to release. So um I just I just have to say like I don't feel darkness every day, but there are times where I'm in it and sometimes I'm masking it and you guys won't know it. <laughs> and then there's times where I'm just letting it all out, point blank, I'm depressed, here it is, and you guys will know it. So I feel like I just, I wanted to say that as an example to those of you guys who do watch me, who do follow me and who, you know, um, those of you who say you look up to me or you love my content or what I do, I just want you to be aware that I am a human being and I'm normal, just like you. And I go through my bad days just like you and I have, I have depression, just like a lot of people do. Um, and sometimes if I have to take a moment to myself, I do it. And I, sometimes I have to remind myself to do it too because there's times where I'm like so fixated on, oh, I gotta get these readings done or I gotta do this and that. And it's like, no, I have to take time for me first. And I feel like I go every month, there's like a certain time in the month um, where I go deep. <laughs> and I feel like I just hit that moment this month. So it's usually towards the end of the month, I've noticed. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I just wanted to get on here and share that with you guys and just have like a little heart to heart. It's been a while since I posted up a little video. And so this is it for you. Um, a, number, a, a little rambly video for you guys to watch. Um, if you watch this whole thing through, leave a comment below. Tell me what are, what are ways that you take care of self? Like how do you self care? Um, give me some ideas because my, my, my ways of self care are reading. I will read a book. I turn on music. I'll put my salt lamp on and lay in bed. Um, I'll cry. That's a self care thing for me. Sometimes I go for a drive. Um, driving calms me down as long as there's no traffic. Um, singing. I take a shower like last night I took a shower even though I had already washed my hair and stuff that morning I showered again at night because I just needed to like wash off the the the, the negative stuff um what else do I do for self-care I shop which is a bad one that's a bad one but I do that I, I am guilty of that um and I, I also eat for self-care which is another bad one um well, I'm not going to say it's bad because we need to eat to live, right? But I'm one of those emotional eaters. I blame my Cancer Moon and my freaking Mars conjunct Saturn in the sixth house. It was like I had fat girl written all over my birth chart, I swear. But anyways, uh, <laughs> um, I, uh, I emotional eat, so that's like a form of self-care, but... Uh, Sometimes it's a positive self-care. Sometimes I'm like craving something healthy and I'll eat it as a self-care thing. But then there's times where I'm like, I just want comfort food. So that's a negative. Um, what else do I do for self-care? Oh, I read a book. Like I read um, a spiritual, positive spiritual book that makes me feel good about myself. Um, it's like those self-help books and stuff. I'll put on a face of makeup in the morning. That's a self-care method for me because when I have a full face of makeup, I feel good. Um, and I feel like it's easier to hide my feelings and, and people will believe me when I say I'm okay when I'm really not. So I usually put the full face of makeup on. Um, what else? Lately, I've been watering my grass, my, my grass and my cactuses, my plants. And that's actually been very therapeutic for me. I do that almost every evening except for last night because I had a bad night. Um, what else do I do? Sometimes if I get into the mode, I will clean, but that's not all the time. Um, I don't know. I think that's about it that I could think of, but share with me, what do you do? How do you have self-care? What do you do for self-care? What do you do to cleanse your energy when you're feeling low? And just honor your darkness, you guys. Honor your darkness. Don't, don't push it aside. Because if you push it aside, it's going to come out anyway. Trust me. I know for a fact it does. So honor your darkness, honor your, your bad moods, honor your emotions, cry when you need to let it out, okay? Put, it, put a post up for a cry for help. People will call. 
people will come forward um, and love yourself. Okay? Bye, guys.